And before you ask, no, we haven't bought one, but we'll do a video about that later. Good morning, my Banyard buddies, and welcome back. What a beautiful morning. Okay, drone in hand. These cows need some grass. Hopefully a little bit of sunshine like this, things will start to dry out. Alright, she's ready to go. Best machine on the farm, this. I knew they'd made spare seat for something. Okay guys, let's go get some grass. Holiday like a fool. Better turn paddy off. Our cows are housed 24-7, 365 days a year. We do that because, like I mentioned earlier in another video, that our land's very fragmented. But it doesn't suit everybody, but uh, it works really well for us. So we're just feeding grass to these cows uh, via zero grazing once a day. Rest of the time, they're on, uh, they're on silage. Just a no-brainer, really. If you can't make some uh, cheap milk in, uh, in April and May, you can't make it at all. Zero grazing is also helping us at this time of year as well because it's, uh, as we know, everybody's had it so wet. I was fairly stressed out with it last week, uh, knowing what to do for best. Um, so one or two came back with, with the comments of support. All right, guys, thanks very much for that. You know, one guy says, keep the faith, Richard, keep the faith. I will, I promise you, I will. Uh, so very nice of you, that, thanks very much. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll explain to you a graze a little bit for you. We're just about ready to feed these cows again. And uh, my friend here has uh, nicely pushed this little bit of silage up for us, uh, what we've got left. But when we fetch the green grass, uh, it'll be uh, piled up all the way down here. And uh, I'm afraid it's too much for little Juno here. They'll have to, uh, they'll have, to have a little, little break now until uh, till this evening. We start zero grazing roughly around about uh, April, mid-April, somewhere around about there. And we try to carry on all the way through till uh, mid-October, towards the end of October. Depending on ground conditions and grass. Um, we've got uh, mixed, mixed areas of grass in different fields. Some are new seeds, some are older pastures, and some grass uh, it's just not even worth bothering with, to be honest. So, these girls uh, look as though they're uh, stood there waiting for me. 20 minutes. So we don't take all the grass for silage making. We try to save a little bit for uh, zero grazing. And making that timing just right, so we've got enough grass for zero grazing. We haven't put all the grass in the pit, which would actually would leave us no grass whatsoever. Let's have a look around this machine on a farmer's point of view and show you around what it does, how it works. Okay, my machine on the front. Very simple, uh, very simple really. It's got a PZ mower, drum mower on the front. Pull this grass out. Here we go. Uh, it's got two drums, um, four uh, four blades on each drum. It turns in towards the centre like that. And what it does when it's spinning, it feeds the grass instead of it dropping like a mowing machine onto the back onto the floor. It goes onto this plate. There's a plate in here, and it lands on that plate. And then these fingers. Can you see the fingers? They come round and lift the grass, it goes backwards up, up the elevator. So, it, so as the grass falls onto the top, the fingers pick the grass up and drag it up onto the top. And it just spins like that. The, the blades are very close to the plate. And uh, that's basically how it works. So it's just a standard mowing machine on the front. And that's that. Once it goes into the elevator here, so the fingers are taking it up the back and they go up that way and it goes up the box up towards the top so inside the box it's just a, a plastic lid and there you can see the fingers again so they go this front part they go downwards so they go down there and they come up the back and you can see we've got a little bit of grass left over from yesterday 
and what they do it picks it up and it uh, scoops it through these uh, through these tines and it scrapes it off the tines scrapes, scrapes it through these these gaps and it drops into the back so it's flicking the grass up that way and it come back down empty so it's really gentle with the grass and what it doesn't do it doesn't bruise the grass like a conditioner because these move a lot slower when it's running you can hear it going ba dum ba dum ba dum that's uh, quite alarming noise really you think what's wrong with it but all it is it's these as they come over the top so once it drops the grass off the top they drop over and that's all it is but it's really really gentle with the grass and it does it without bruising it so that's in the top One or two people mistake these as uh, forage wagons, but they're not, it's classed as a, a zero grazer. Simple reason is it doesn't crimp the grass and bruise it, it just lifts it gently up into the box at the top. So four large tyres help it travel over the uh, ground without sinking. Um, it's really well quite balanced. I don't know whether you can see or not. Um, the wheels are actually completely in the middle of the machine. So when the box is full, all the weights directly over the wheels. Popping underneath, we've got a floating axle, pivots in the centre, um, so it rides rides really well. Uh, the large pivot bolt's in the centre there, and it allows it to ride over the lumps. The door's fairly simple, just lifts up on two rams underneath, and then uh, when it closes, it drops and locks into this catch here, and one on, one on each side, one there, and one there. It's a moving floor on a chain bed floor the bars you can see how the grass comes up through the middle and then it pushes it pushes it off so it comes up nearest to us now at the moment scoops the grass up very gently and then the fingers go back through the veins and the grass falls into the trailer and it just keeps pushing it up like that and as we're driving it we just keep moving the bed back a little bit all the time the machine is really well balanced it's designed to be pulled by a hundred horse tractor uh, which is ideal on flat ground but on hillsides you might want a little bit more power especially if it's raining and the grass is wet because it does add add quite a considerable amount of weight to it so for traveling on the road it just has a ram which pushes off the central point and it pivots pivots here on this this pin and all that does it just uh, pushes it out so you can go down the roads and then when it, when it comes to travel on the road it uh, it falls back in and tucks very neatly behind the tractor it's a little bit wider than the tractor so we've got to be careful on the road because it uh, it does take wing mirrors off occasionally. Oil connections are straightforward. We've got the two main pipes which drive the actual unit itself, and then you've got the the two pipes which lift up and down. Fuller braking axle and the lights. Standard PTO with a clutch. Uh, they're quite quite robust. It does take a little bit of starting because it has to turn the whole thing in one go. Um, and then your second PTO onto a, onto a first gearbox which drives the mower. So that's driving the mowing machine. And it's like I say, it's just a standard PZ mower. So the moving bed is just fed with a hydraulic, uh, hydraulic motor. Uh, just works on your spool valves and that moves the, uh, the chain bed floor. It has, it has a sensor on the back, so the sensor on the back here, uh, what that does, when the grass comes to the back of the machine, it pushes the door open slightly and then it starts to beep in the cab. Due to the wet conditions as well, what we've been doing, we've been multi-cutting different fields. These are uh, small paddocks. I'm studying one at the moment uh, is about uh, 10 acres and the other two are only about two acres. And the reason we've done that is because uh, the wet conditions. This one's got a slight slope in it, 
So we've cut it on a on a cross and an angle across the banking. Because the conditions have just been so wet, we're just trying to avoid making a mess really. We try to work together as much as we can. Simon's spreading slurry. I'm collecting grass for the cows. Obviously we don't go too close to the uh, the uncut grass because you won't want to fetch slurry back in with the with the with the fresh grass. We're just about full now, but uh, you can just see how soft it is. The ground's very very soft. We're trying not to make a mess. It's cutting it off not too bad. It'll do well this. But at least with a zero grazer, what it does, the big wheels, they squash it back down again, make it level. Okay, it's paddled the soil to the top a little bit, but it's not too bad. We'll pick us way around. We'll do a bit in this field, we'll do a bit in other fields, and uh, just keep pinching a bit. Cows eat grass. They always have done, they always will do. It's their favorite food. I know what mine is. The thing is with zero grazing, it allows you to uh, have a lot longer growing season for your grass. So you can graze grass by the zero grazer for a lot longer throughout the year. And it uh, becomes a lot more constant and a lot more even feel, feeding, even feeding for the cows. Disadvantages, you've got to do it in all weathers. Uh, the cows don't seem to mind. But obviously, uh, with it being wetter, you get a heavier load, there's actually less grass in the trailer, so they tend to eat more when it's wet. It's a bit tight down this lane, but the beauty of this machine, we can actually move, move the bed out a little bit, just squeeze down, and we can steer it on the ramp. Good job we've got a hard track down here, it's a bit rough though. Just to get, uh, get around the edge of the field without actually going in and making a mess because it's still very soft underneath. Okay, let's get back to the farm and get these cows fed. We're about four or five tonne in there. We talked about uh, doing a little bit of size making this week and take about 30 acres of uh, grass that's ready, uh, but we changed this mind in the end. Simple reason is because it decided to do what it normally does best. Double S it down, and uh, that's just what it's doing today. So a little bit of a disadvantage of fetching grass for cows or zero grazing. You've got to do it in all weather conditions. We're producing some really cost-effective milk at the moment. Um, we jumped from uh, about 33 litres up to 36 litres just by changing onto once a day feeding of grass. Uh, that makes a massive difference to the farm. With zero grazing, because you're fetching the grass every single day for the cows, we'll generally fetch it twice a day or two loads a day, and then occasionally we'll balance balance the load up with the third load or balance the feed up with a third load uh, maybe a couple of times a week. Do you think you're waiting for the grass? Another benefit of zero grazing is uh, you can keep your stocking numbers up or it allows you to keep uh, larger stocking numbers because we're not poaching the ground outside in the fields especially in wet conditions like it is. Here I go, you want some? These cows leave this grass in a matter of hours. Uh, there's about four to five tonne of grass. If the cows are in a field, they'd only eat the top. But when you zero graze and cut it off like this, they eat everything, they eat every little bit. It cuts the grass and it leaves about three inch of stubble on the bottom. Well that just, uh, because that's left, it recovers really quickly and starts to grow. It cuts it off really clean into a nice big bunch like that. And it, uh, it cuts it absolutely clean at the bottom and it doesn't damage the grass, okay? So like a cut more conditioner, it bruises the grass. So it doesn't, it doesn't damage it at all. So it's as though the cow's actually grazing this grass in the field. You see by, if you look at this grass closely, it's not damaged at all. It's just cut clean at the bottom. Um, there's about, what, 10 or 12 inch of grass there. It is just starting to go past, past its best now. We're getting the stalks and it has got, uh, it has got a little bit long. But uh, because it's zero grazed, 
it's cut off of the bomb. The cows will eat every little bit and they don't waste them, waste that bit at the bottom. So when a cow's grazing in a field and it's munching away at the grass, what it does, it tends to wrap its tongue around the leaf and pull. And that's how a cow grazes. But what it does, it leaves the, the stalk at the bottom, but it leaves a lot of stalk at the bottom. Uh, probably maybe six inch sometimes, it depends on how much grass there is in the field, obviously. But usually about six inch. Well, that's wasted. Uh, so that's wasted grass. With the zero grazing, you don't get that. Because you're cutting it off down to about three inch stubble, you've got that little bit left. The grass recovers very quickly in the field. It soon sets new shoots up and it recovers. And, uh, and doing it this way, the cows, they have no option to eat, but to eat every little bit. Fresh cut grass, don't just love it. I could eat this myself, but I won't. They do. If you think these girls have got a lot of grass from that one load, don't be mistaken. These girls will shift this grass in about four or five hours. I'm talking every bit. Just look at this lot. I think we're asking a bit much of Juno, don't you? Just checking the cows for the final time this evening. They've done really well. They've eaten every blade of grass. So what they've got left now, a little bit of silage. This will last them overnight. And then uh, we'll fetch them some more tomorrow. All right, guys, once again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to give us a like and subscribe. It just helps the channel grow a little bit. And uh, once again, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.